Hi, it's T with T Quilts, and today I'm showing you some strings that I have left over from cutting some jelly roll strips, and they are all different sizes, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing with them. Okay, we're back, and I just wanted to start with the strings. Uh, a lot of people say that they have difficulty knowing how to even gather strings. So these strings were all created as I was cutting jelly roll strips. I am also going to upload a video of how I actually make uh, strings as well. Some of my strings, not all of them, but sometimes I use my leftover backing material and cut that into strings as well. So we're going to talk about that in another video. But... Let's go ahead and put this to the side. And I have just pulled out various pieces and done some light sewing so I can just continue to work my way through this video. So you're not going to be able to see the entire strip sets. But basically you're just going to sew random fabrics together. Don't worry about trying to match. In this, I was working with green and blue strips. So that's what I had laying out. And so that's what I'm using. You can make this any color that you like. And sometimes when I have strips, I try to see if I can put like approximate size strips together. If it ends right here, that's okay. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not sewing a really short strip with a really long strip. So then I go ahead and start sewing my true strip sets together. I might make like five of these at a time. And then I can just go ahead and press my seams over. And I would use my wooden iron, which I happen to have one in the drawer here. But I just press with the wooden iron while I'm piecing my blocks. I don't worry about going to a heated iron. If you're interested in purchasing a wooden iron, it also comes with a matching set of, you can also order it as a matching set. So I'll leave a link to the video that talks about that as well. But that's what I do in between pressing strips. I'm not worried about my strips being perfectly straight. Remember, these are cutoffs from other projects. And I just go ahead and add my next strip to that. <clears throat> Let me pull this one back real quick, but I will just go ahead and add my next strip to that, and I sew down. And I don't worry about on a string quilt where the strips aren't straight anyway. I don't worry about alternating which edge I start from. I just start everything at one edge, so everything's kind of squared off up here at the top. So then once I get three strips put on, I've already pressed that. And you just keep going until you get a strip set for this project, which is at least eight and a half inches wide. So here I have a strip set that has four pieces on it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and skip to one that has my piece wide enough to be at least eight and a half. And I try not to go over too much because if I have a thin strip, I don't want to trim so much from a thin strip that it ends up just being a spot in the finished block. So I try to watch as I'm getting my strips bigger. When I add this last strip, I'll try to see how much it measures between these two pieces and add a piece that's going to be big enough that I can trim but not so excessive that when I start trimming, I'm going to have little small pieces on one end. Okay, so on this one, I have gone ahead and now pressed with an actual heated iron. 
And our next step here is that we're now going to cut these into eight and a half inch squares. And I happen to have an eight and a half inch ruler here. So that makes my work a little bit easier. Get my rotary cutter out. <laughs> And so that's what I do next. Now you can double this up and cut if you like. But since I have strip sets that are all different lengths, I just go ahead and just cut uh, one at a time. But what I really do is if I had more than one strip set and I don't have it right here, I would just layer them and then cut with a longer ruler to cut my pieces. So you can do it however you want. And I'm just basically placing my ruler so I don't have... A small piece like I'm not lining up to one side where I'd have a little small piece right here so I'm just kind of in the middle of my strip it doesn't matter long as I'm beyond my savage edge over here and then I just want to trim this off and again this is an eight and a half inch ruler so if I put this on a rotating mat all I would have to do would be to rotate this but I have very little room here for rotating mats, so I have to do it a little bit different while I'm videotaping because the camera is actually in my space. So I'm just going to line this ruler back up and cut this remaining side. And notice that I also remove my cutaway before I move my ruler and that's to make sure that I've gone through all the different layers so this is what you're gonna have when you're done and for this project I'm making 25 8 and 1 half inch squares so that's step one I'm sewing on these on my Saturday uh, live sewing chat so if you want to come sew with me that would be great as well so I wanted to come back and show you that I had some strings that were approximately nine inches long and so I have also made some blocks that are just single so I'm utilizing all sizes of strips and so I know that I can get one block cut out of each of these so I thought that I would just come back and share that so if you got enough that you can get two blocks out of a strip set or just you've just got some solo strip sets just as long as they're big enough so that you can trim up your eight and a half inch square you are ready to go and I did put this on a rotating mat or any mat that's smaller than your surface and then I'm just going to turn the entire mat and now I am going to go ahead and cut the remaining two sides so there I have just cut three single blocks. So I just wanted to come back and tell you that as well, that if you didn't have full strip sets, you can just use uh, strips that are a little bit bigger than what we need for right now. See you later. <laughs> so there are my 25 blocks that I have cut from my strip sets. And I have these units here left over see if I can tilt you down so these are my leftover units uh, I don't know if I'm going to use these in the quilt right now but I just wanted to make you aware that nothing gets thrown away I keep all of these and if I don't use it in this project then I will use it in another string quilt project but you can also cross cut these say into two and a half inch segments and you can use them as border pieces as well so I don't know if I'm going to use them in this quilt again but don't throw them away please keep them <laughs> use them somewhere else you can even put it on the back of your quilt if you like but i will see you in the next video when i am working on part number two thank you all so much for watching please remember to like comment and subscribe share my channel with your other quilting friends and i'll see you in my next video bye bye t quilters stay blessed Thank you.